news you can trust. This is the North States News Daybreak. We start the show with a live look outside this morning at the glow of the park fire. This is from PG&E's Colby Mountain Camera. The blaze now mapped at more than 406,000 acres. Officials say the fire activity has been picking up as those high temperatures continue. It's 5 o'clock. Good morning. Thank you for being here on Daybreak. I'm Nazi Javid with First Alert Forecaster Preston Dunyan, tracking that activity and those high temperatures that you say are expected right to have an impact on that fire fight. Yeah, good morning, Ozzy. Unfortunately, yesterday was one of those days where the beast woke back up, right? We were starting to see some of that containment grow without the acreage really growing. And then throughout the course of the day yesterday, you may have noticed from the valley floor looking east, seeing those smoke plumes develop like we saw in the first couple days of the fire. Now, we didn't see that same prolific level of growth necessarily, that 50,000 acre chunkage just kind of being built in, but we did see a lot of growth in the fire. And, and of course, that's reflective when we look at that perimeter and also in those hot spots. And of course, the hot spots may not be the most recent in the system, so I'll kind of talk through what I'm seeing online that we may not have in our computer yet. Right now, still all quiet on the Butte County portion of the fire. That's a positive. We shift a little bit further north. You see that that has kind of crept a little bit further, and I think the no more recent mapping shows those hot spots extending a lot further towards Mill Creek there. So that is one of the areas of concern. I'll also here along 172, there is a cluster of hot spots separate from the fire perimeter itself that indicate maybe this spot fire has kind of extended beyond uh, the perimeter that we. We see here. Now, the thing that was really kind of the deciding factor yesterday and things blowing up was the fire was burning here kind of in this drainage and then it made its way up onto the plateau, right? It rode up the hill and then it kind of got free rain. It got out of that kind of trap and now it, it's got its chance to really grow. And so that's what happened yesterday out here. We had all three of those big factors, hot, dry, windy, all playing into the fire's favor. And unfortunately, that led to that significant growth to the northeast because of that southwest wind was the story out there. But as Nazi mentioned, hot temperatures, a big factor in that we have those at play very similar to what we saw yesterday in terms of temperatures. We'll talk more about wind coming up soon. All right, thank you, Preston. Turning now to our morning update on the park fire. We have a time lapse of that massive plume of smoke that many saw all across the North State as fire activity picked up on the blaze yesterday. This was near areas of Mineral and Mill Creek in eastern Tehama County yesterday afternoon. It's now mapped at 406,579 acres with containment still up at 34 percent. Officials say crews continue to tackle the flames burning in areas with dry, heavy fuel. We have resources that have been dispatched to support the growth of that fire and to ensure that our communities are safe and they are following the operational plan to mitigate and protect our communities. Officials expect higher activity to continue as high temperatures and dry conditions are forecasted to last throughout the week. More people have been forced from their homes as the increased fire activity prompted more evacuation orders in eastern Tehama County yesterday. The warnings that were in effect east of Mill Creek to the Plumas County line have now been upgraded to orders. Officials say people living in those areas should leave immediately. Meanwhile, more people living on the Cohasset Ridge in Butte County have been able to go home after sparking in Upper Chico Park nearly two weeks ago. Several evacuation orders and warnings continue to be lifted and downgraded as the fire moves away from the area. But we have all the latest evacuation information and links to resources for all the counties impacted by the park fire. That's on our website, krcrtv.com. For the next two weeks, people in Butte County impacted by recent wildfires can visit a newly established local assistance center that's in Chico. The goal is to help those who are just beginning to pick up the pieces. Our Manasadek went to the center yesterday. No one ever prepares you on what to do when you lose your home in a wildfire. This local assistance center has been set up here in Chico at the old 99 cent store to hopefully answer some of those questions for people beginning that difficult process. Everybody's keeping a positive outlook, I think, because what else can we do after losing everything? Now it's time to move forward, and that's again why we're here. Let's like, hopefully get the ball rolling. Brandy Grout, who lost her home in the park fire along with her parents, was one of the first people in line early Monday morning for the county's new local assistance center. She says she's just focused on going back home. There was never a question in any of our minds, like Cohasset's home, so... We want to get back up there and rebuild however we can. Experts focused on relief and recovery, lining the old 99 cent store in Chico, ready to assist with things like smoke damage and insurance. When we come in here, quite frankly, we just say a little prayer 
please have a lot of them, majority of them have insurance. Annie Barber is a coordinator with United Policyholders, an advocacy group focused on helping people navigate the often murky insurance process. Insurance right now is a mess. It's a disaster of its, of its own. And we know that the rural communities are being dinged more than anything else. She says their group only staffs their tables with fire survivors, saying after losing her home in the 2017 Tubbs fire, she can offer assistance in more ways than one. Being there for them, holding their hand, and letting them know that we know what it feels like. Her advice to survivors? Fire survivors have this inner working that's, that's anxiety, that's pushing them to make decisions. And those decisions need to wait. You need to slow it down, not be driven by that anxiety. Very good advice there. In Tehama County, a second local assistance center will open in Red Bluff for three days starting August 15th at the Red Bluff Community Center on South Jackson Street. Turning our attention out of Shasta County where a vegetation fire broke out along Go Gover Road in Anderson yesterday. Uh, you can see it here. Officials say it spread to about 12 acres before crews got it quickly under control. It appears to have been sparked by a lawnmower. Authorities reminding people, please use caution as much of the North State faces extremely dry conditions and triple digit temperatures. You know, these guys are getting tested this year with a lot of fires and they're burning intensely with this heat wave that we've had and the dry fuels that we're experiencing. We just ask the public to ex uh, exercise extreme caution when recreating or doing any work in the dry wild land right now. So we ask that please prevent any unwanted fires. Please, officials say a person was cited for improper use of the lawn equipment and sparking the gopher fire. Hey, good news on the North Coast. Officials have lifted all evacuation orders and warnings issued because of the hill fire burning south of Willow Creek in Humboldt County. Officials making the announcement yesterday morning reminding people to stay prepared for any potential future emergencies by signing up for emergency alerts at HumboldtGov.org slash alerts. 507 coming up on Daybreak. Why some investors are on edge after Monday stock market madness next in Money News. And we got 40s out to the east, 50s out of the coast, 60s and 70s in the valley. We'll talk about how we warm up today and that wind element in your first alert forecast coming up soon.